Welcome back to the second video in our November Blender visual scripting series. In the previous video, we created an object adder on our own panel. And in the second video, following the Dark Fall series, uh, we're gonna change the panel name to my first add-on and the header will change to object adder. So go ahead and do that. And once you've changed those names and recompile with Shift R, we're also going to change the icon and we're going to pick this icon here to fall in line with how Darkfall has it. And this panel is now done. So what we can do is do just a little bit of cleanup and grab these three items here and hit Control H. And what that does is collapses them down to only the used sockets. Once they're collapsed, you can select all these and hit S and Y to scale. And we've got a nice space for our first panel. And what we're going to do in this video is add in a sub panel. And a sub panel gets attached to a panel that's already existing. And it's in the interface section. So if you do Shift A, go to interface. And towards the top third, there's a sub panel node. And click it and add it in. And the first sub panel that we're going to create is the scaling sub panel. So you can just type in scale. And then we have an option to default closed. So when we compile, Shift R, notice how we haven't seen the panel because we have to click and select it to add it to the panel. Now we compile again. Now we got the panel added and we're going to add in a label and another operator. So we can just copy these first two and Shift D to duplicate them down and we can connect them in. Give your label the description so you can select an option to scale your object. And then on here, we've got a font icon. And for the button, we're gonna hit Control H to bring it back. And he's got it set for a resize operator. And the resize operator allows you to dynamically size your item. And that's going to be found in the object menu under transform and scale. Now, if you don't have Python tooltips, you can turn those on in the add-on preferences. So you can go to edit preferences and under interface, there's a Python tooltips checkbox. You can click that and save your preferences or if you have auto save, it will auto save. Once you have that set up, you can come back to object, transform and scale, right click and do copy operator and paste it. We're gonna hide all these options because we want it to just dynamically work. You could set up stuff if you'd like, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to give ourselves an icon for size, and we'll just do this one. Pile now, and notice how our panel is closed. We have a resize option. So if I click that, it's going to allow me to dynamically resize my object. Okay, collapse this one down now. And we also have a scale that we're going to be adjusting in the sub panel here. And the scale, when you right click on it, notice how it's a property. So I can copy this property, but if I were to duplicate this button down, and try to paste it, you'll notice that you're going to get an error message stating that it wants you to do an operator on the button node. So delete this, and there's actually an interface property node. It's halfway down. And you can paste that property right in. Now, properties are unique because they live within some kind of blend data, and this property is expecting an object blend data. So you do Shift A and go to your blend data section towards the top or the, around the middle area, there's an objects node. And we are mostly concerned with our active object. So just connect that in. And now you've got your blend data set for the scale that you're going to be adjusting. You hit control H to collapse that down and collapse that down and move those up. Now when we compile, we have our scale options. But we want to make those vertically aligned so that we can select all three of them. And we can do that with a column node. Shift A, interface, and column. Now when I compile, you'll notice I can click and drag and adjust all of them. And we had one more thing in this video and then we'll take a break and go to the next video for the next sub panel. But we're gonna make it so we can adjust the size of all of our items. And you can do that with either a row or a column node, but we'll want one at the very beginning and we'll do a column since these are all arranged from one item to the next vertically. So we can, we can actually move this column node up and we can drag in and connect to this noodle instead. And there's a cool little icon here on these nodes. And if you don't have them enabled, you can scroll to the right at the top of your header and click on the gear cog and do show insert sockets. And that will allow you to click up and add a socket above, or you can use a plus icon to add sockets below, or you can connect out through the little socket here. So I'm gonna connect to this socket, click up again, and replace where this socket's coming from.
I'm going to do the same thing up here and you can drag up and as long as you've got it highlighted it will connect that socket. Just make sure that your data matches so your diamonds are all connected together. Sometimes it will connect the wrong sockets. Connect into this one and connect down to this one here. So now that we've got a column set up, you recompile and notice how it did a slight adjustment. You can now scale the Y for all of your elements vertically. And notice how they all grew a lot bigger. You can also align your items so there's no space. And I think we settled on 1.2 in the dark fall video. That's pretty nice. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one as we add in the specials sub panel. See you in the next one.